Welcome to Ohm, the Resistance Radio. I'm your host, Harvey Dent, with what I like to call a National Study Reveals, or Answer. Before we get started, why don't you go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell to be notified when I upload again, because what I'm about to show you should change your perception of the world we live in. Today, let's talk about Kobe Bryant's helicopter crash. Now, it's been a little over a year since it occurred, and um, I covered it creating videos as the facts I found grew. So, a year later, here is a compilation of the information I've gathered, along with an update that should just knock the wind out of you. Because of the sensitivity of the issue that I am discussing, I need to make very clear that this is not about whether or not anyone died. It is about the discrepancies and the coincidences that I found while investigating this story. On January 26, 2020, a Sikorsky S-76B helicopter crashed in the city of Calabasas, California, around 30 miles northwest of downtown Los Angeles, while en route from John Wayne Airport to uh, Camarillo Airport. Number of passengers, eight. Fatalities, nine. That would include the pilot. Okay, so the helicopter crashed. Nine people died. Sikorsky, S-76B. Nine people died. Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and uh, seven others that no one, I mean, I didn't know. Maybe some people knew. I don't know. There's the pilot. This is the Sikorsky S-76B, the exact helicopter that they were on. I know that many of you remember seeing photos of him in pictures like this, but this was obviously a promo and a skin or wrap. If you look at the call sign in 72 ex it is exactly the same in 72 ex I know this because I know how to use the internet. Yes, and uh, Helis.com actually has um, a history of all helicopters that are in service. So you can see here that uh, it was first owned by the state of Illinois up until September 2015, where it was then sold uh, to Island Express Holding Inc. Now, we will get back to them uh, momentarily. I would like to direct your attention to the interior of the helicopter. Now, this is before it was purchased by uh, Island Express Holdings, but the configuration could not allow for many more passengers than what existed at the time it was purchased. So here are actual photos of the interior before it was purchased. As you can see, there is like one bench seat configuration and two pilot seats. Now that bench seat at the most could accommodate four at the most. The two pilot seats, two, and then the cockpit uh, one for the pilot, one for the co-pilot. But could you imagine Kobe Bryant, an NBA player, fitting in this little tight configuration? There's no way he could. He was like, what, 6'8", six, 6'9"? Six, I don't know how tall the dude was. I could obviously look it up if I wanted to, but I think I've looked up enough. Uh, he was tall enough to require that the seat across from him be removed, and uh, he could use it as a footrest, so that would eliminate even one more seat from the cabin. So that aside, let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they could fit six in the cabin and uh, two in the cockpit with the pilot and co-pilot making eight total. They claim there were nine. All I can count are eight. I'm sure that anyone supporting this story would give 101 reasons as to why they could accommodate nine and i'm sure that they will have nothing more than words they can't produce proof or facts anyway that is not what this whole story is about let's let the uh, dead rest in peace and move on to the sikorsky uh helicopter and island express holding corp who was the owner operator of the helicopter at the time of the crash now when i originally covered the story i found it odd that the owner of um, Island Express Holding Corp, Philip Di Fiore, who's listed as the business's principal, happened to be the same Philip Di Fiore that uh, was president, director of maintenance, basically the owner of um, Rotorcraft Support Inc. Now, this may be where I lose some of you, but please try and hold on. Rotorcraft Support added an S-76 service center to their suite of um, OEM authorized service centers. Now remember the S-76 Sikorsky B is what uh, Kobe Bryant perished in. Here is a comment from 
Philip G. DeFiore, president and owner of Rotorcraft Support. So he is president and owner of Rotorcraft Support. They just opened an S76 service center. The um, Sikorsky S76 just happens to be one of the most widely used helicopters in the world, with over 500 currently flying in the U.S. alone, and the use by private individuals projected to grow in the future. Soon after the crash, um, the FAA began to investigate the matter um, and determined that the crash was due to the helicopter um, not having a terrain awareness warning system. The current law only requires medical ambulance helicopters to have these systems. Now is the moment you've been waiting for, the moment that it all comes together and the moment that I've been building to, the update. The update on this story, what could it possibly be? Well, wouldn't you know it that the nation was so torn apart by the death of Kobe and Gianna Bryant that they created a Kobe and Gianna Bryant Helicopter Safety Act. Uh, February 2nd, 2021, Brad Sherman and Dianne Feinstein brought the issue to Congress. I strongly urge that the United States Congress pass a federal law that would improve the safety of helicopters operating in this country, said Vanessa Bryant. I believe there is a chance that Kobe and Gianna would still be alive today. So, the National Transportation Safety Board formally recommended in 2004 that all helicopters be equipped with terrain awareness and warning system. Apparently, the NTSB has been recommending these systems for 15 years, and the FAA has, for some reason or another, avoided uh, making them mandatory. But the timing of this legislation is just um, highly coincidental. The um, company that will get a majority of the contract, the government contract, to perform the installation of these systems on the helicopters is going to be, guess who? Rotorcraft. Then why wouldn't it be? They just happen to have the largest F-76 service center in the nation. The owner of which just happens to be the same owner of the helicopter that Kobe Bryant died in. Oh, that didn't have one of these systems. Now, if this information that I've just shared with you caused you to raise an eyebrow or even question the official story, then it is your responsibility to share this video because everyone deserves to be presented with facts and truth and should be allowed to make their own determinations. To hell with any stigma attached to conspiracy theories. These are no theories. These are facts. And I think I've proven them. Until you find your truth, keep looking.